So, uh, welcome to this month's Bioconductor Developers Forum. Um, it's a slightly more full chat room than previous weeks. I don't know if that's indicative of what's going on in the world, but welcome. I have some new faces as well, which is excellent to see. Um, so, we've got a couple of topics this week. Um, I guess the first one is going to be a, a recap of things to look out for in the kind of change from version 3. Point, uh, what are we on now? 12 of R, something like that. Three. R3.6 to R4. Um, so Laurie's going to do that. And then hopefully uh, that's going to transition into uh, a bit of a discussion about the build system itself and how maybe that differs from what's going on at CRAN itself. Um, and then I also want to spend a bit of time uh, just talking about this forum itself and how people are finding it, whether the topics are useful, um, and sort of what direction we want to go with it in the future. Um, so uh, Laurie, do you want to start? Sure. Can you see my screen? Yes, no? No. Try no. again. How about now? I'm still not seeing it. Uh, that is not good. Um, your slides are in the chat, or the link to them is there, and I'm looking at your slides via the Google Slides. That might be a solution. Yeah, so everybody should have uh, a link to them in the chat and also in Slack. Um, and if that also doesn't work, one of us can share our screens instead. No, nope. share is working now. Perfect. Hmm. Much. Hmm. Is someone else sharing it for me? Yes. Just let me know when you want to go to the next slide. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Because I got really confused because I'm like, well, I'm not on that page, so I don't know who's sharing. <laughs> okay. Um, so this in large is going to be a recap of what was presented in November with a couple of additions. And I know like Hervé and Mike, you guys added stuff too. So if you guys wanted to expand, just stop me at any time or add stuff. Um, I did put a link. It's at the end of the presentation too, but on this first slide, um, there is a troubleshooting doc on the website. Um, that I'm going to try to keep uh, active, and I plan on updating it later today with maybe some helpful hints of how to uh, try to reproduce some of these errors uh, that we see on the Devel Builders. So, next slide. So, one of the first ones that we really see or that has a, been uh, a big source of errors on the build system right from the get-go was the new way to define S3 method res registration. And in R4.0, they became uh, much more strict about it. And you need to declare your all of your S3 methods in the namespace or there are errors. And um, a lot of these had to do with like plotting or show methods that were undefined. And just as a quick um, example here, you can see like I used the TCC package, which may have been already corrected by now, where they had a plot method for their TCC object, and that needed to be put into their namespace. And similarly, from like the FEPDNN at one point, had a transform method for their probe set. So like those two S3 methods would have needed to be defined in the namespace to get rid of the errors that they were seeing on the build report. And if you go to the next slide, they took a range of different error messages depending on uh, what methods were declared. So um, it, these were some of the main ones that we saw where like X is a list and doesn't have components, no applicable method for uh, some function applied to the object of some class. So these were the general types of errors that we would see on the build report that hinted that it could be an S method S3 method registration. Next slide. Uh, 
Um, Mike, I think you added this one, so I don't know a ton of background about this, but it seems like there was some configuration changes where the solution seemed relatively simple, um, but that there were some changes in the R commands config. I don't know if you wanted to say anything more about this since you added this to the troubleshooting doc, but. Uh, yeah, um, that, that does look like something I sent you. Um, <laughs> uh, I seem to remember that basically they changed support for what um, uh, what environment variables or configurations to do with Fortran was set. And there was at least one package that was using something that essentially had been deprecated and then made defunct. Um, and so that was throwing an error saying it just didn't know what this um, config F77 was. You just got back a, a null or a couldn't find it string or something like that. Um, and that was breaking at least. I think it was a I think it was LP Symphony. Um, I can't quite remember which package it was. I guess there weren't too many uh, that were affected by that. Um, but it was definitely a change. It was noted in the news file and things that just hadn't been addressed by the developer. Great. Thanks. Um, one of the main changes, so this isn't necessarily a default in um, R 4.0, but our, um, we're in touch with the R people and they really want to make it a default where when the conditional has a length greater than one before and um, with default settings, it produces this warning that only the first element will be used, but because they plan on upgrading this to an error, the bioconductor build systems have made this an error. Um, so we started to see that and there's, the general solution is that in the coding and any or all surrounding the vector in question would be necessary, but um, they could actually point to true coding errors depending on the code that's being used. And um, there's some information about how to reproduce and set up some system variables in this link at the bottom here. Um, and I'll try to add some additional pointers to setting up a system on that troubleshooting, how to troubleshoot the documents that I pointed in the first slide to try to replicate um, the build system environments needed to reproduce this. But it is a real error that should be investigated and looked at. Next slide. And similarly along that lines, there's also another system in, uh, environment variable that we're using for our command check where it's not a default in R yet, but they really want to make it a default. And uh, that's the use of the double uh, ampersand versus a single ampersand and similarly for the and and ors. And um, basically it's a misuse of the double versus single implementation where one is expecting a vector comparison while the other is just a single comparison. And so you can kind of see the, the dummy example below where and and through where there's a length of two. So that double percent is really for um, scalar comparisons rather than vector comparisons. And, most of the cases that we've looked at, it's a simple misunderstanding and a simple misuse case. Although this is another um, place where possibly having uh, an any or all surrounding the vector would be the appropriate change. But again, it should be investigated because it could point to potential code issues that uh, people weren't expecting. Next slide. Um, and again, this is more of a recommendation where um, using class equals equals something is really a kind of bad coding practice and it's a much better syntax wise to use an is or inherits. Um, most, and there's a far better discussion uh, on the R developer blog than I could give. So there is a link here for the, um, the R developer blog. Um, and really, this actually causes a larger error if you go to the next slide, where in R4.0, they did actually make the change where a matrix now extends an array. And um, 
if you so between using the class equals equals that now a matrix will be a matrix and an array so it has a double length vector so that combined with the previously discussed uh, length greater than one error will result in an error on the build system and we are seeing this a lot. Um, this is probably one of the main ones that we're still seeing in the build reports that expand out to a lot of different packages. Um, so the simple solution is generally using the is or inherits matrix instead of trying to check for uh, a matrix class. Next slide. Another big one that is a more recent change that's causing a lot of breakage on the system is they've decided to move ahead with changing the default arguments and data frames, um, strings as factors. So it went from string as factors from true to false, um, which generally I feel is kind of a more intuitive, um, our, uh, intuitive way to think of data frames and the and how they're transformed, but it does break unexpectedly in tests where there were checks for particular factor levels or constructing different factor levels where people are assuming that the data frames uh, now automatically do factors. Um, and the simple solution is to either um, change or add the argument string as factors equals true into the data frame call, but really, again, this is well, that's the simple solution. Maintainers may want to reevaluate their code to see if it is if that is acceptable or if they want that behavior to remain or if they would like to switch over. Next slide. Another relatively new change is in the stats package, the smooth ends. Um, and Airve pointed me to this one that it was affecting a couple packages, including I ranges where now um, it will return an inter integer vector um, when the input is an integer vector. And previously, I guess it could return either an integer or a numeric vector. So I just had kind of the example code here of R363 from R4.0. So you can kind of see how in the second example, it went from a numeric to integer. So it could have um, underlying effects depending if you were expecting a specific um, class type output from that function. Next slide. Um, so the next two slides are ones that we were made of, aware of um, from CRAN packages, and I don't have much information on it. We were only made aware of it. Um, so for uh, grid, apparently there was some latest breaking, late, late breaking enhancements to the grid package. And a lot of the CRAN packages had already been fixed, but there were still a couple that they were following up on. But it also trickled down into bioconductor packages um, and mainly the complex heat map, which had a lot of trickling effects. So bioconductor maintainers should be made, should have been made aware of this. And um, in the email that we got, the complex heat map were working on a fix. And um, it's just something to look out for that may affect different um, grid and plotting functions. Next slide. Um, and similarly, we were made aware that um, the plot generic has moved uh, package locations. So it's been moved from graphics to the base package. And it can cause a variety of different errors on the um, build report. And there's not strictly one. I guess one of the bigger ones that you would see is like no generic function found in plot. But if you go to the next slide, we were also seeing it kind of as a um, connect course S4 vector to a type double, which has a similar to the S3 method declaration. And basically the explanation that they have for it is that um, before it worked because the right plot method was found um, in the search path, but now it's failing because it um, it's calling the one in base instead. So it's definitely something that should be um, fixed and made aware of. And again, um, these are only two of the examples of the errors that could be seen, but it could be masked on the build system as other things. So if, um, something that could be investigated if you're seeing an error that doesn't fit one of the previous mentioned ones. 
Next slide. One of the other changes that uh, R4.0 had was they were more stringent on argument matching and checking regarding um, when you set a generic to the set methods, where we were seeing a lot of errors when there was a partial match. So on this example, you could see like the set generics, the argument was breaks, but in the actual code, it would be break, and that would cause an error for a partial matched argument. So either the generic would need to change to break or the set method would need to be breaks, but um, there is definitely going to be a little bit more stringent checking against partial argument matching. And just in general, it's better to be able to um, not use partial argument matching in general for coding just as a best practice. Next slide. Um, this was one relatively specific to us, and uh, Hervé pointed it out in the build system for Windows. So starting in spring, we saw um, some errors regarding uh, Windows and MidTech, and uh, you would get an error invalid UTF-8. And the general recommendation is to add the use package UTF-8 impunits into the sweep file, um, and that would generally fix the error. We're not exactly sure why this started happening. We just know that it did. Um, and we'll probably try to update things as well as it gets closer to the release, but um, just something to be aware of. Next slide. And then in general, um, since R4.0 is not available yet, uh, we could see throughout this build cycle that a lot of cram binaries weren't available yet, um, especially for like Mac and Windows. Um, and that's partially um, out of our hands. They become available when CRAN makes them available. Um, so we're kind of been in a waiting game. Hopefully most of them have been built since the R4.0 release has been announced. Um, but as they become available, they will be um, automatically added to the builder. We won't do anything special to like build them manually and get on there when they're available, they're available. Um, and along with that, um, as a general reminder, Bioconductor only mm, allows dependencies for packages that are maintained either in CRAN or Bioconductor. Um, so if packages have been removed from CRAN and are no longer being maintained, then packages need to be updated um, to not use those dependencies or they need to reach out to the maintainers of those packages to get them reinstated in CRAN. Um, um, Laurie, I have a question, sorry. No, nope, that's fine, yep. Um, so um, in the meantime, if we wanna compile some of these packages uh, and test them on, uh, on Mac or something, uh, do we have a guide somewhere about how to set up your Mac system? I know that we have the, the Dockers, uh, but that's like mostly testing for Linux if, I'm, if I remember correctly, but uh, if you have like an um, OS specific issue, um, I don't know, we have a guide for that. Um, I don't think we do actually. I think, yeah, most of the time, I think like the Docker recommendation is for testing, um, you're right, on Linux, because um, we found that most of, well, I shouldn't say most, uh, a lot of our users are on Windows and couldn't figure out how to reproduce it on like a Linux environment or a Windows environment. Um, maybe that's something that the core team can discuss a little bit more to figure out if there's a, a way to get a recommendation uh, for how to reproduce that on other systems. I don't know if anyone else on the call has. I'm not sure I understand any the question. We're running. Um, I mean, we typically get our Mac binary. I'm saying as a developer, I get my Mac binaries from r.research.adt.com. It's the Devel branch. Simon has been very good about making those available on a daily basis. Um, so what exactly is the question? Is it access to a Mac or is it choice of the environment to run on a Mac in order to try to get a good sense of what's going to happen at the build system? Um, so from the, from my Mac, I can install the R Devel. And my understanding, maybe I'm, maybe I'm missing something, is that um, if you want to use the install the packages function for a lot of these packages that are CRAN based, um, 
you have to compile them from source and some of them I'm running features to compile them because my need to change my make bars, things like that. Um, and I don't know, you have a guide on what are the appropriate settings for that. Or there might be a, a repository that I'm uh, that, I, that has these binaries that I'm not aware of. Uh, I see. Well, we probably need to take this offline. Um, I, I don't do, you know, if you have, what is it called, uh, Xcode tools uh, up to date, you should be able to compile everything from source through BIOS e Manager install. So let's be, you know, send me some details and I'll be happy to discuss that with you. I don't think it's definitive because we don't have a Mac running in the central build system anymore, do we? No, uh, no, we don't. Yeah, I was going to yeah. uh, chime in about that. That's that's another uh, uh, big problem we have right now with the with the developers that our Mac builder died, and uh, we still uh, we're still trying to uh, resuscitate this machine. Yeah, so, yeah. I guess the yeah. the um, a, a good rule of thumb, I suppose, is that if you can get it through green on Linux. Uh, you're probably going to be okay with Mac. That's been my experience. So as long as we can get you running and building and checking on Mac, uh, I would think that that should be enough data to be sure you aren't really egregiously failing to comply. So let's just make sure we can get that going, and then until we have central reports, that's going to have to be good enough. Of course, I'm talking completely out of my hat. I, I have no authority for any of this, but I'm just, you know, trying to say how, how it makes sense to me. In my experience, I've had uh, different warnings generated by compilers on Mac than from Linux. So, if I if I upload things, I will get I will encounter probably not errors, but definitely warnings where different compiler flags and that kind of thing throw up things that spit out at least a warning, so it doesn't pass check, basically. Um, and that's not easy to diagnose without access to those particular compilers to try and work out what's going on. You're basically changing, certainly at the C level, you're just changing code blind and hoping that you've made the correct changes, um, which can be productive, but can also be difficult. Right. Now, it is worth pointing out, I think, that uh, the, the, the C compiler that comes out of um, Xcode is, may not be the right one, and Simon also has a tools page where binaries for a CLang LLVM uh, compiler uh, are available. Um, and you may need to update that. So those details we should probably write up somewhere to get something that's as close as possible to what we'd like to work with. The other thing I guess to worry about is compatibility of binaries between what you'd be generating there and what's on CRAN. So there are technical issues. I'm sort of glossing over them, but I don't want to slow us down too much. Uh, maybe we need to have a, a Slack channel on Mac OS development where we can um, straighten all this stuff out. And uh, for those of you that are not aware of too, Martin posted in the chat too, uh, a repository that has pre-built libraries and binaries on Mac uh, that could be downloaded and not have to be compiled from source. Um, and pointed out some other points that the compilers are included in the binaries and that there is a Mac-specific mailing list um, if people want to join that as well. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I would say that the main motivation I have is um, uh, so we have uh, we're training some new bioconductor developers, and uh, like I can debug a lot of my own Mac. Um, spend a lot of time on that, but like uh, if we had a guide, it would be very useful for them to because this is their first time installing R Devel, their first time dealing with all of this. So um, just uh, some pointers of where to go will be useful. Yeah, that's great feedback. Does a channel make sense on Slack? I think I'll it definitely makes sense. See yeah. if we get any usage. Yeah, I think create the channel and then we can talk about it there. And if it leads to disseminating the information somewhere more centrally or public or whatever, then I think that'd be great. You want to carry on, Laurie? Sure. Next slide. 
Um, and then we do still see a couple or occasionally deprecated functions or functions that have moved from uh, different packages or are no longer exported. Generally, if functions are deprecated, if they're following best bioconductor practices, a lot of them will have um, suggestions of what to use instead, although that's not always the case. And again, if packages um, decide not to export functions, then you can either reach out to those packages to see if they've moved somewhere else or a reason why they're not or no longer being exported to see if it's um, something else. But um, those types of errors would have to be um, corrected and investigated as well. Next slide. And I think that was pretty much it. Um, I will try to, uh, uh, as mentioned, I'll try to keep this Bioconductor Developers How to Troubleshooting Build Report um, page updated if more pop up or we're seeing other common errors. And I'll try to add a section there about um, trying to reproduce the build environments along with those extra environment variables and how just you could set them on um, different systems because there's some guidelines that we made for the single package builder and then I could link in that document as well. And again, some of the discussion points are on the R Developers blog, which is a good tool in general for people to know about and to keep track of changes um, that R is making. Were there any other general questions about anything else or anything covered? Did anyone want to add anything else? Henrik here. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Hey. Yep. Awesome. Uh, so this is nice. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to reflect on, for instance, like the class equal to matrix thing. Uh, that will, it all feels, it feels like everything is coming together with the conditional length greater than one and the scalar vector logic with the double double versus single notation. That's probably also covered in in that case. So um, I think that would be picked up in different ways from the test system. And I also want to say that I saw that when you have the case with um, the double notation of ands and ors, um, so I've been working and looking for those for like a good year or two now. And I don't think I've seen many cases where this solution was actually to replace it with this, the vector version. So I think those cases I've seen mostly being real bugs. So that's that's one comment. And um, about the deprecated functions, um, I, it's not in place, but they prepared to have them. So now when you have a deprecated function or um, defunct, that actually signals a special condition class. I think on Kurt's uh, roadmap, it is to have those show up in our command check at some point. Uh, but that's maybe that's a year from now. That's my guess. That was just random comments to this. Great, thank you. Thank you. How responsive, Laurie, have people been to fixing some of them? So that the, I guess when you started this, I thought oh, most of these must be fixed by now because you talked about them three months ago or four months ago, whenever it was, and surely people have been getting emails and it's fixed. And now there's a whole bunch of new stuff at the second half of this talk. Um, but yeah, how responsive were people to the first set? Or did you guys in the core have to go and fix most of these? Um, well, the core is not fixing most of these just because there's far too many and um, they are real errors and we uh, it's a good opportunity to find out maintainers and if they're still willing to maintain their packages. Um, some are more responsive than others. Um, we do, at least right now, have a large slew of deprecated or deprecated. Um, well, yeah, deprecated packages. Um, about 50-50 are user requested and 50-50 have been unresponsive since the beginning of the last release where their packages have remained broken. Um, but the encouraging thing is I actually just sent out um, a new batch of uh, emails, I think last week and this week, and uh, received a lot of feedback. Uh, to give you an idea, I think I sent out maybe 192 emails. Um, and I'd say that there is a pretty good portion that did actually respond to that saying, I didn't realize my package was broken. Because um, my first couple attempts, 
I did like a massive group email and just grabbed the package name and said, your package is failing with this type of error, which um, I guess people generally ignore going, oh, it must have been a mistake or it's not my package. Um, so the individual emails have really helped and we are seeing um, a lot bigger response of at least acknowledgement that people are looking into it now. Um, and we're gonna, the core team is gonna try to keep reaching out to these packages, uh, I guess, up to the release to try to get uh, more responsiveness. So. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any more questions for Laurie? I do encourage everyone to tell your developer friends or if they maintain a package to periodically look at the build report and also to make sure that the maintainer email and the description stay accurate because um, there also is a fair handful that I've deprecated because emails bounce and are no longer active. Um, and we do get a couple people coming back saying, oh, I changed my institution and my email is just not updated, which um, is somewhat understandable, but also not enough to track you down. So um, please remind all of your maintainer friends to try to remember to keep those accurate and updated and to be checking the build system. I'll just this is a, it's pretty amusing that uh, Mike uh, assumed that the core team would fix the packages that weren't fixed by the maintainers, but, but that's not gonna happen. I guess I'm aware that sometimes when you guys make a change, uh, you might go in and change. So I guess if, if the issue was introduced by the core team, then maybe there's a different obligation there than, than uh, yeah. if it's introduced by our core team. Right. Um, but there, exactly. there is, I guess, a precedent for you guys to at least sometimes change people's code. Yeah, I do that when I break people. When, when I break pe people's package by making changes in S4 vectors or arranges on one of the core packages, uh, then I try to fix as much as many packages as, as I can, because I feel bad that I'm breaking other people's stuff. But uh, in that case, I don't feel bad because I didn't do it. <laughs> so. Yeah, just just for the record, our our core does the same thing. I mean, when we uh, make you know incompatible breaking changes, we feel obligated to reach out to the CRAM maintainers at least and help them. Uh, fixer packages. Uh, the only time we don't help them is when they're, you know, making use of some undocumented feature or whatever, and then they're on their own. Okay, that's good to at least explicitly hear that uh, under what circumstances people might fix your code and might not. Um, so I, I guess there was also a, a suggestion to discuss a little bit about how the build system with uh, within Bioconductor differs from the CRAN build system and what uh, that that might introduce. Um, I thought to facilitate this, um, I might actually ask some questions, which I think I know the answer to, but but might not about the two build systems. Um, so I don't know how are either Henrik or, or Michael super familiar with the CRAN build system. Would you be able to answer relatively straightforward questions about it? Maybe. Try us. Uh, okay. I'm I'm an I have an outside view of it, but I've been okay. That's for a long that's time. perfect. Um, <laughs> Because basically, I thought there might be a few people on this call that don't know that much about them, and this might be at least useful to set the scene before discussing how they're different from each other. Right? Um, so I, I guess um, we'll start with someone from Bioconductor's side. But so where does it get the code from? Is it is it from the Git repository? And I guess what branch and how frequently does it check the code out and that kind of thing? For the Bioconductor build? Yes, for the, yeah, for the build yeah. system. Uh, yes, yeah. I'm going to say nightly, but yeah. Right, right, yeah, okay. So, yeah, so that's one one, one big difference is that we build out of uh, Git, or before that it was the version. So we, we, we pull out code directly from a, 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 a version control system, and, and, and we, build, we build the tarball. Uh, the source tarball by running RCMD built on the on the um, package source tree that that we put out uh, from from GitHub. Yeah, so that's one major major difference from the CRAN builds. I think I never submitted anything to CRAN, but I think you you submit a, a source tarball already, right? So they take that. So they don't have to 
build that for Starboard. They don't run RCMD build. Uh, they will check it, uh, running RCMD check on it. But so we do that. We do RCMD build. So every day around uh, uh, PM uh, East time, um, East Coast time, uh, we pull out. Uh, we pull out every every. Uh, um, uh, um, package source tree from, from GitHub and then uh, run RCMD build and run RCMD check uh, and 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 uh, for uh, Windows and Mac we also uh, run um, an extra step to uh, produce a binary and uh, and then uh, at the end of that uh, we propagate packages that uh, satisfy the um, the criteria for being propagated. So the propagated package get package get propagated if they if they got their version bumped and if they pass um, in, um, all the steps that, that that are displayed on the on the on the report. Pass means they don't have an error or timeout. Okay. They can have a warning. Uh, they still propagate. And that is for, so if they have an error on only one of the platforms, that's right. The so the propagation is, uh, we look at uh, whether the package can propagate or not on each platform separately. It's, yeah. Oh, so they can, they can, uh, they no, can I, propagate on one platform, uh, but not on the other. Right. Oh, so you can have different versions uh, distributed. So you can end up with uh, a source uh, turbo that propagates uh, because it's all green or orange on Linux, uh, but not the Windows binary because there's a failure on Windows. So yes, that means that we end up with uh, uh, a source turbo that is ahead. The version of the source turbo is ahead of, uh, of, the, of the Windows binary that, that, that becomes available. Could it be the other way around? It passed on Windows, it, but not on Linux. It could. It could. It, it's 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 less common, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it yeah, it can happen. And so basically, we have to, yeah. So basically, anything in that check column we're seeing that shows an error, they become errors because they something changed in in the dependencies or are. Well. Well, uh, it could be anything. I mean, most of the errors we have right now are because uh, of uh, those changes that uh, Laurie discussed yeah. uh, previously. But you also have truly uh, genuine uh, package errors uh, that uh, are uh, because uh, something is wrong with the package uh, without without this having anything to do with uh, recent changes to uh, R. But uh, as a developer, you can't get a package out. I mean, it's not released. Okay, it shows up at check. Okay, now again. It shows up there, but it won't propagate. Yeah. Right. And so the on the CRAN side, it's up well, to the uh, developer about, submit, right? about Sorry, propagation, yeah. I, just, I just wanted to mention the little, you have this little lead uh, on the very uh, far right of the report. Uh, they are blue. Blue means, uh, I don't know what that was picked up like that, means uh, there's nothing to propagate because I guess uh, the version was not bumped. Uh, but uh, if you if you scroll down, maybe you'll find, I don't know if you'll find some LEDs that are green or red, uh, but green means the package uh, is, yeah, here, this one, for example. It's going to propagate the Anu Finder package. We propagate, um, uh, on the two platforms here, and uh, sometimes you see a red LED that means uh, everything is fine. The package would normally propagate because it passes RCMD build and check, and the version was bumped. But for some reason, it won't propagate because maybe it depends. Uh, it requires uh, a version of another package that is being blocked from propagating. So we don't propagate, in, in other words, we don't propagate uh, packages that would have impossible dependencies, right? That would depend on something that has not propagated yet. Uh, 
I, I okay, think so from the, the propagation is uh, is interesting. I have two questions. The first is if I read this, if I understand this correctly, uh, BioC Manager Valid can give different answers for different platforms on a specific package. Uh, be, yeah, I mean because because the the most current version of a package of a given package is platform specific. Uh, yes, uh, the uh, yeah, BIOS manager valid will uh, will uh, be platform dependent. Yes. Okay, that, that's an interesting fact. I, I was not aware of that, mm -hmm. but it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, the other concept of propagation is actually very rich also because what you're what I if I understand correctly what you're really talking about is propagation to the installation events. And, yeah, it's propagation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's and that gets interesting because if we're building from source, we may be able to get something, but if we are only getting binaries, we may get a different version. Yeah. And exactly. You know, Refining the vocabulary so we understand really what's going forward to get, uh, you know, a, a snapshot of the ecosystem that a user needs turns out to be very far from simple. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, and the situation is is not uh, if for that particular matter. The, the situation is not different from what 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 you see on CRAN. You can also have on CRAN. Uh, it's not uncommon that uh, a package. Will, will will be available uh, for uh, I mean the latest the latest version of the, of, of the package is not the same whether you are uh, we're talking about the the source double or the Windows binary or the Mac binary you you right. have those differences in CRAN too yeah mm -hmm. now while we have a Comments bunch of on folks that. on and particularly Henrik can I just raise one more question well you sure. go ahead I've been talking too much. No, no, you, 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 do you, or I can comment on that version thing on CRAN. So I think on CRAN, they won't let anything in the door if it doesn't pass on all platforms. So that's a big difference. So when things fall behind on CRAN, is, I think that's more an exception, uh, that there's something in the build system that doesn't work or uh, oh, it's not Simon uncommon. is delayed. But I think I think it's the the rule is that we won't take on your package if it doesn't pa pass all the incoming requirements. So they don't let one platform bubble through, um, and others stay behind. So the the the, the, yeah. the the situation where where we see this is when when there is a new version uh, of a, a package. Uh, it, I I tend to see this uh, or. Uh, difficult packages, those, those packages that are hard for some reason are hard to build on on Windows or Mac mm -hmm. because they require a lot of uh, system libraries or yeah, and building the binary is not a trivial uh, process. So and 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 and, and suddenly there is a new uh, source double showing up on CRAN for this package. During during a week or two, you will have that new um, source double available. That is going to be ahead of the binaries because the, the, the corresponding binaries have not been updated yet. It's not uncommon. Cor correct, I agree. But the 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 rule here, the the goal objective is different from Biconductor and CRAN. Mm -hmm. CRAN has like we want everything coming in to be on the same version, and then there are these exceptions. Uh, but on Biconductor, you allow the developer to trickle through things that. If you're not on Windows, you don't care about Windows, that might fall behind because of the developer. But the CRAN gatekeepers would stop that. So I, think I just ask first some clarification, Henrik? Yeah. Um, so when you're saying um, letting something in, that's accepting a new package tarball for an updated version. Uh, I guess in, in bioconductor terms, it would be like being added to the repository and then you're in, right? Like that's the, to me, the, the term letting you in means being accepted yeah. into Bioconductor. And then you can kind of, I don't want to say do what you want, but you're sort of free to reign. But so for CRAN, you submit a new tarball every time. And exactly. And Burton looks at the build reports and says whether that's okay before it propagates. Yeah, I'm trying to see if there's an analogy here with the, um, uh, I mean, so you co commit and then Bioconductor, Git 
git push and by conductor runs all the checks for you um, for people on CRAN that's almost like the CRAN incoming test um, you you get they will test on Linux and Windows for you um, and they will come back and tell you uh, it passed next step will be we would push it out on CRAN if it doesn't pass they say you have to fix this um, so yeah I think it's maybe it's the last step there uh, it's that pushing it out to the package page and and the repository that's the difference and uh, the difference in, the, in this sense is like you have to pass the incoming check across the board and currently that means Linux and Windows um, and yeah did that clarify it Yes, very much. That's um, that's very useful. Yeah, as someone that has not ever put a package in CRAN, um, you just sort of assume everything works the same, right? And clearly, it doesn't. So, um, yeah, no, it's, that's really it's it's uh, good that you're saying this because it's like I I've been I must say I've been out of the biconductor loop for a while. Um, I mean, it's really hard to catch up with everything these days, and I've been much more in CRAN. And so I'm curious, is like if the people on the call here, how many people are actually submitting to CRAN? Is it just me or who got experience here? So I have also packages on CRAN and Bioconductor. Yeah. And here's Constantine, so I've both. Yeah. I've done it so once or twice. Yeah. So may maybe <laughs> this is actually a um, thing it's like to reflect on that Bioconductor developers, maintainers, and uh, owners might actually diverge here from CRAN because you don't have the experience. Um, so, that, that I and yeah, so we're speaking different languages here, and uh, needs to somehow converge back a little bit. I think it's I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Force you, you to submit. A a I mean, we've tried to automate it, automate our builds and. Ideally, we want the packages to build on both packages. So now, especially towards release time, again, the core goes through, and any package that's failing on a single platform, we will contact and request that they fix their package or look into why it's failing, if it's something on our build mm -hmm. system or if it's actual coding error. Because there are a few packages that we do allow on that are like not supported on Windows that if a dependent package relies on that package, then their package isn't going to be available, and they didn't think about that, and it will just cause an error rather than saying that it's not supported. Um, I've investigated packages before where there are, are functions that say, hey, if you're doing this on Windows, you need to run this call, but if you're on Mac or Linux, you run it this way, where it's just a coding um, distinction that they're not aware of, but if you look into like the R help man page it basically says it where they need a conditional based on os um, so we do try to track down those um, especially around release time to try to get everything on all builders or as many builders as possible but yeah yeah i, I think I, maybe that's the difference it's like you by conductor once every six months has this gatekeeping function and in between it's like a lot of influx um that that's my interpretation of the difference here. So another want, question. Uh, yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, Henry. Uh, just I just wanted to uh, mention that th th this role that propagation is platform in the, uh, is platform dependent um, um, has been has been around since the beginning of the project. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, yep. nothing recent. I, oh, 16 years now. Yeah. I mean, it would be interesting thought if 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 you change that rule and say it has to pass all platforms. Uh, how would developers change? I, I, it's a burden, but maybe there's a gain too. I'm not saying you should do it, but you can think about it. How would that? What I think change? is also important to keep in mind is that most of the end users are not using the bioconductor develop version, but are on the stable one, and then everything is fixed to the same version. And for working across all platforms as far as I understand. So is that a true? True. I always wonder about that. Are, are most people? Do you have stats on downloads for this? So the download stats don't uh, 
the, 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 the download stats, we, everything is summarized in a huge SQLite database and that kind of details uh, is there, but it's not uh, displayed in the, in, the, in, in the summary, in the stats summary that we display, the, the HTML report that we have. I mean, yeah, I'm just saying, uh, like, take single cell sequencing analysis. It's like, can people doing research in that field actually be on the stable release? I, my, 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 my feeling is that really most people use the, the, the current release. Um, the that's non, that's non really my question. Okay. Well, the, okay. Yeah, no, I mean, Devil is barely usable. <laughs> so. I think the main think. obstacle to people using the Devel branch six months of the year you need to be running our Devel, and that I think is a problem for many groups. Yep. So, based on like support site questions, and generally, I think I agree with what's been stated that I think most users, general users, um, are using the stable version, and mostly it's the developers that are using Devel versions. Or an older version. A lot of people are lagging behind. Yeah, like two hours behind. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys heard of uh, uh, R Open Size? I think they they made an application to the ISC, the R Consortium ISC, about you know building a, a, I guess, a package repository system for scientific packages. I don't know if they had talked to Bioconductor at all about that. Would that be Carl Bettiger and Noam Ross? Yeah, I assume. I was, I, all I know is it was the R Open Sci project, yeah. which includes many people. Uh, but they, somebody made a submission to the IS. I guess we can find. I, um, it was it was yeah, granted. Their the request was granted by the ISC. So we'll probably look that up. But but yeah, it was. I don't I don't know what they're up to. I haven't read their proposal or anything. But apparently they're they're doing something in this space. I had a very contact with them out at the CZI Open Source uh, group. Uh, and they're very uh, amenable to discussing the approaches that we've been taking with binaries for Linux. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the complications, I was just looking at install.packages. I don't know if you've looked at the logic of that function anytime recently, but it's very complex. And distinguishing yep. Linux as a platform that can handle binaries in R uh, seems to be a problem to be solved. I can comment on that too. It's like you might have heard R Studio. Uh, they have that now. So their approach there is like they have for all the common architectures, they build one binary. Um, so they, they have multiple different binaries across the architecture. But then I also talked to Gabor, who's now is also at our studio, and he had he talk, told me like a month ago that he actually found a way to to do it differently that works across the board. So I think those things are showing up soon, like one year or two years from now, I hope. Ah, we need it now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you can give some clues, I don't, you know, I think we may have to write some of our own code to get this to work uh, in the binary space for containers. So what is, maybe you can communicate offline or by email or whatever and describe the exact issues uh, with, with this, because my understanding is that it will install Linux binaries if, if they're in the repository, right? But of course, you know, given that there's always these complications of binary compatibility, but if you're in a container and you know you know you have the compatibility, then it should it should work. But I mean, I'd, I'd be happy to look at. I agree at, with you that it should work. If you look at writing our extensions where they discuss the the uh, the formulation of a repository, it only handles Mac and Windows as binary. Oh, and there's okay. a, a package type in the in the uh, platform.os that. Um, it seems like a complicated, a little bit of an obstacle. So, Leah, it'd be nice if we could solve it. I'll just mention that if you place uh, binaries in the source uh, branch of a of a Linux um, CRAN style repository, the binaries actually install as binaries. Um, so you can masquerade binary packages as source tarballs, and it just works. I just posted into the chat a little conversation on one of the Slack channels that's about that just recently. Yeah, I've been using the, um, the GitHub workflows as a DI platform because you get Mac and Windows on there as well. Um, 
but it's really noticeable that Linux is now the fastest pack, uh, platform to download and install all the dependencies because it uses um, RStudio's binaries from Jim Hester's work. Basically, I just stole his workflows and made them for my packages. Um, but it's really noticeable that the binary install there is so much faster than the source that it now uses to install on Mac. Um, so some mechanism does exist in a in a fixed uh, containerized environment, I guess. The mic is now we diverged. Did you have more comments, questions about the, how Cran worked? Well, we've we've already reached the hour, um, and I think okay. I've made it through one question. But um, uh, I guess I had a, a couple of other things, right? So um, one was um, what platforms do they run? Because I find out about uh, things that have gone wrong where Cran is building bioconductor packages that I maintain on platforms like Solaris or uh, something else that's a little bit unusual, um, and I have no idea that's going to happen, right? Because I just look at the bioconductor build reports and my own build reports, and then I get an email from someone saying it no longer builds a CRAN. So I guess I had a question about how often and how do you get hold of the bioconductor dependencies of CRAN packages, um, and what platforms does that run on? So I don't know how often CRAN uh, pulls, but I can imagine that's like several times a day. Uh, because they are like on top of everything. Uh, seems like they catch bugs before yourself. So they run uh, checks on old versions of R, current versions of R and Devel. And they do that on Linux, Windows and Mac and Solaris, as you noticed. Solaris is uh, uh, the patched version of R. Um, they also have different Linux uh, versions. Uh, they don't have sent OS and Red Hat, which a lot of people in academia are stuck with. Uh, they do different compilers, GCC and CLang or Clang. Um, they do uh, the current Windows tool chain and the one we hope to get in 4.0 with a GCC 8. Um, so they try to cover it a lot. And then they run various uh, sanity checks on native code. Uh, so you get those comments. Um, they run Valgrind too. Um, and also to comment about Solaris, I'm, I'm so impressed. When you submit a package, that very, very slow machine is one of the first that actually gets check, check your submission. And I don't know what kind of fancy directed graph analysis he's using, but he's like, He's on top of it with that old machine. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I didn't know you had like one hour for these calls. Uh, one thing I I would like to comment on, and basically, what's the reason why Viconductor doesn't run our command check as CRAN? I guess that's you, FA. <laughs> It has CRAN specific, uh, CRAN specific. Are you, you're cutting out. Or, yeah. um, I guess Martin was going to say that it has CRAN specific tests, <laughs> and that was my impression too. So it, it never occurred to us that it would be a good idea to use that, but. Um, and I have no yeah. no uh, knowledge a priori of what as uh, RCMD check as Cron does. I've never submitted it to Cron, so it never occurred to me that maybe we should do that. I don't know. So I think every, what what we saw in the beginning is like all this S method registration, conditional length, and everything. It's uh, a lot of those, I th or some of those, would be caught sooner in Biconductor if you had ash as CRAN. So those problems. I think, I think as CRAN does is great. And then it has one or two things that are very CRAN specific. Yeah, that one the one thing that is a the one thing that is a blocker which I said in the Slack channel is like it pings CRAN and see what the current version on CRAN is there. Are you like a new package submission? Uh, or did you bump your version versus CRAN? But other than that, I don't think there is anything that is really CRAN specific. It's just like a little more stricter rules or up-to-date rules. Um, so, and well, that's, 
Yeah, sorry. Uh, no, just for what it's worth, uh, Martin and I did sit down and look through the, um, the ASCRAN uh, options and what were set. And when new packages are submitted to Bioconductor, there are a lot more of those um, flagged through the environment variables. Um, and the single package builder does more of the CRAN checks just in the background. Um, so I mean, the, the daily builder does not, but when packages are going into Bioconductor, they are checked more closely to CRAN, just not using the as CRAN flag. Yep, and that relates to the Slack channel discussion that is really tricky for developers at home to run our command check to to emulate those flags. They either run it without or with ASCRAN. Uh, I, that's what I my take home was, but the problem is like it's really hard to 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 for people to use special flags. Yeah, I, I guess I, I would like to say that um, I like to think I um, I'm on top of what's going on in Bioconductor and that kind of thing. I have definitely failed the uh, um, logical of length one fail on CRAN, where it was uh, sorry on on Bioconductor, where it was passing what I thought was fine on my own machine and then submitted it and got that fail right because I didn't set the environment variable. Um, and I guess I feel like if if I'm not paying attention to that then there must be quite a lot of other developers. That's maybe that's egotistical, but like I like to think I'm at least aware of the mailing list and what's being announced and that kind of thing. Um, and I've definitely fallen foul of that that issue. So there's something uh, I want to mention here is that, uh, and I have this on my to-do list, and I'm sorry that I didn't didn't have time to to add this to the build report yet. But uh, it was it was requested. It, yeah, it was requested a couple of months ago. I think during one of those meetings we had that the environment variables that we use to control our this check should be displayed somewhere on the build report. And that's something I really want to add. So now that I'm I'm feeling more pressure about this, I, I think I'm going to do it before the end of the week. It might be helpful to have this. And there are instructions for setting those up with the ones that the single package builder uses on the contributions GitHub repo, uh, along with links of how to set them for various systems, which again, I plan on putting in the troubleshooting doc as well, um, because that would help people um, to be able to set them for their systems and just leave it set up that way, but yeah. Did we lose Michael Lawrence? Because uh, I wanted to ping him, but Martin, you're still here. So. How much power control, can, how much can you suggest to, to R, Devel, or R Core and CRAN? Because this thing of having an R command check as BIOC, um, and I'm thinking more in the general term, uh, like a generic flavor of it, C could you push for that? Because I think that would be able to solve a lot of the problems you have if you could make it very simple for users to check with bioconductor specific stuff but but then our simply check as by would be would be implemented and controlled by our core right now now so i mean i have some ideas like uh, if you can have dash uh, dash flavor equal to cran and dash dash flavor equal to bioconductor and dash dash flavor equal to henrik and then that calls a specific that is a, it's, it's calls that a package. Is a yeah, okay. yeah, so it's it's like I can imagine you can have like a specific check packages with the one function that is called. Um, right. So uh, it would fit in the current model, but it's right. Uh, right now it's like you need to do various hacks, um, and it's easier on Linux. It might be harder on Windows, and it might be very tricky if you're like using R Studio. So I think there's like some very low-hanging fruits that if R could add those. In in many ways, I think that things that are checked with as dot as as cran should be just checked anyway, right? 
and it's kind of right. weird that, that they've they've only been implemented for ASCRAM. It's it's I guess they felt like uh, the CRAM people felt like they didn't want to impose those standards on the rest of the of the world, but actually since they're basically the entire package producing world other than us, um, they should have those things that are enabled by ASCRAN should have just been enabled unilaterally across all of our. My interpretation there, and it's like I'm guessing because I actually don't have any facts, but I think they move things, they start by trying them out in ASCRAN and slowly migrate them up. Uh, I mean, because they don't want to break all the, the CRAN repos overnight. And then they they have uh, stricter rules when people submit new packages, and eventually it's a state. So they have this like conditional length greater than one, and the scalar double and single notation. Uh, eventually, that will become part of the regular R command check. That's my interpretation how they use it. But uh, so, do you think you could could you propose that, Martin? I mean, I don't think that it works by proposing. It works by having a a, a well worked out uh, patch, or uh, yeah, and that that's simple and non disruptive. So it's about it's. I mean, I, I my own discussion. A, as an, be, an, sorry, yeah. sorry, um, Henry, yeah. my own uh, discussion on uh, Cran uh, with our core would probably be more along the lines of. Uh, making uh, the path from um, when new new restrictions are introduced, new new features, new checks that may, those are made part of uh, base R as opposed to introduced as environment variables and then sometimes as CRAN and so on. So just a more aggressive and straightforward. Either it's a worthwhile check that everyone gets or or not. That would be my personal approach. Okay. But uh, so you don't believe in having, I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit confused there because that would argue for saying use ASCRAN everywhere, even by conductor. Uh, philosophically, ASCRAN okay. is great. Uh, okay. But I don't think ASCRAN is the right way to go or making flavors of is the right way to go. I think uh, having a standard way of checking packages is the way to go. But don't you have like other things in your bio C check uh, that is outside of what CRAN want to do? Uh, some of those are stylistic and more advisory, I'd say. And uh, there are things like we have bio C views which CRAN doesn't know about. So yeah, but I that's... guess it comes back a little bit to Hervé's point about, or the point about who controls that code, right? And you'd like to have something that's very modular. And what's a modular way of implementing things in R? It's to produce a package. You know, there we've got BIOC check. Oh. I, I want to clarify something too, just, just so we are on the same page that BIOC check, we run BIOC check only on submission, but not on a daily basis. Once a package is accepted and goes to the main build system, uh, we, don't, we don't run BIOC check anymore. It's just our CMD check. Do you want the BIOC developers to run it locally on a regular uh, basis? Ideally, yeah. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people do that. I don't do that. I mean, I think, yeah, they, they pay attention to the output of a uh, BIOC check when they are in, during, during the submission process. But, but yeah, I don't think a lot of developers really care once their package is accepted. I can't integrate it into uh, our studio, so um, at least I haven't worked out how to do that. There's not a button to run our uh, BIOC check, and so kind of once I've done it once and got through the door, um, I might not run it again because it's not available at the touch of a button. Um, that's my feeling on it. You can run it just as a function. I like buttons. <laughs> it's just the way I work with our studio. <laughs> I'm sure there's plenty of really good ways of doing this, but I press build and check buttons, uh, and I, if there was a BIOC check button as well, I, I would press it more frequently. But that's just my my developer opinion on, on why I don't run it. 
once I don't need to run it. That's so old school. I do, Alexa, please check my package. <laughs> 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 okay, we should, um, we should probably wrap this up. So I'm going to take the uh, the discussion of future directions and things uh, into the Slack channel. I'll post my thoughts on it there um, and hopefully get some feedback from you guys and stuff. Um, so thanks very much. This has been super interesting. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I hope uh, some of the other people have enjoyed it as well. Um, and uh, thanks very much, everybody, for attending. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.